some key ideas of arrays, and then we'll write some code together in a moment, but I want to start with this kind of overview conceptually. Um, so on the screen, like, so when we talk, what is an array? Um, our, our formal definition is it's an ordered list of values or an ordered collection of values. The word ordered is important. That means that each element that's in our array, um, it has a position, and that position has some important significance to it. Um, there's a sample array written out here at the bottom of the slide, and so we can see that the element with the value of 94 is before the element with a value of 82. Okay, so it's it's ordered. It's not just a jumble of numbers. Um, I have the physical model up on the board up front, and with the physical model, um, that array has has five elements in it. Uh, two, four, nine, eight, ten. I think I wanted that to be a six, um, but I can fix that. Um, and so you know, it start the first element is the value of two, and then the value of four, and then six, and then just kidding, nine, then eight, then ten. Um, an array is stored in the computer's memory, and it is referenced by a variable, much like how a variable can reference an object stored in the computer's memory. That said, an array, that said, an array is not really an object, um, but it's, it's similar in some ways. Um, each element in an array has an index. Okay, so here's where it's kind of similar to a string. The characters in the string have, are at different indices, each element in the array is at a different index. Um, much like a string, the first element is at index zero. It is zero based. Um, and then we talk about the length of the array is the number of elements in the array. So on the slide here, this array has 10 elements. Its length is 10. So valid indices are from zero to nine inclusive. For the physical model on the board, that array has a length of five. So valid indices are from zero to four. So I put the physical model up there and we'll use that a little bit today because I want you to think of an array as um, a bunch of little pockets, just like what's on the board, right? And we can store values in those pockets. Um, and it's, it's got that size, that one's five. So let's see what the syntax looks like to create something like this. So in your new BlueJ project, in the upper left is the array notes class. This is where we're going to create a series of um, static methods as we do a little bit of live coding together to explore the syntax that we need to know before we can start um, doing more interesting things with arrays. So let's create a public static void method called create array of evens. And I'm going to type the line of code that does this first. And it's going to look odd because arrays have a syntax unlike anything else in Java. And then we will go back piece by piece and like break this down. Okay. But here's the syntax to create a new array of integer val of 10 integer values. Um, we do need to declare a variable. And when we declare a variable, we have to specify its type like turtle crush or int x. Um, when we declare an array variable, its type is the type of the elements, like we're going to want an integer array. So I'm going to say int, but then I suffix it with a pair of square brackets, a left and a right square bracket. That's the syntax to say it's an array. And then there's my variable name. When I read this in my head, I don't read this as int left square bracket, right square bracket. That's really awkward. I read this as int array. So I say, oh, I have a variable evens. Its type is an int array. So I just replace the word array when I see the pairs of brackets. And then we can initialize that variable, much like we would. And arrays in many ways are similar to objects, even though they're, they're not. Um, so we still use the new operator. Um, but there's no class, so we don't have a class name. So instead, we specify the type of the element that is in the array. And then we use the square brackets again, but this time we put the number of elements we want inside of the square brackets. So that's the admittedly odd syntax for how we create a new array. Um, arrays in Java, the syntax for them are identical to arrays in the C programming language. 
And so I think they did that because when Java came about, there were a lot of people familiar with C. That doesn't help any of us at all. Um, but I think that explains why it's a little bit different than everything else in Java. Okay. All right, so let's break this down kind of like piece by piece um, as we go through this line of code. So first of all, you know, useful stuff, an array is an ordered collection of elements of the same type. So a couple key words here. We use the word collection in Java to refer to a, you know, different types of data structures. An array is a collection, um, at least conceptually. Um, we're gonna study array lists next semester. In software engineering, we study stacks and queues and sets um, and maps and trees, um, other types of data structures. Um, but an array is the first data structure we're studying in this class. Um, so an array is an ordered collection. We already talked about ordered, but here's the first restriction. It's a collection of elements, elements of the same type, okay? So we can have an array, so here, what, what about the type? The type can be a primitive type. Um, for example, we can have an array of ints. Uh, we can have an array of booleans, we can have an array of doubles, that's fine. Um, or the type can be a class type. We can have an array of turtles. Um, we can have an array of strings. All of that's fine. What we can't have is we can't have an array where some elements are ints and some are booleans, or an array where some elements are strings and other elements are turtles. All the elements in the array have to be of the same type. That is a restriction of, of arrays. Um, like an object. So an array variable, in this case evens, an array variable is like an object variable in that it must be declared and initialized. So by declared, again, what I mean by declare is we specify its type. This is an int array and the variable name evens. This highlighted part is the declaration. The initialization part is we have the assignment operator and what we're assigning to it is the reference returned by the new operator for creating a new integer array of 10 elements. So on the board there with our physical model, I have one of our big pockets um, labeled evens. And in that pocket is a Wii remote. And that Wii remote is our model for a reference to the array in the computer's memory. So much like we would have a reference to, an, uh, to a turtle um, in the computer's memory, here we have a reference to these series of pockets in the computer's memory, which stores all the values in the array. So conceptually, it's very similar to what we started the year with in terms of objects. All right, what else about arrays? Um, the number in the square brackets, and again, square brackets are these, these things to the right of the P key on your keyboard. The number specifies the number of elements in the array. Here's another limitation of an array. The, oops, the number of elements in the array cannot be changed. So once we make a new array, in this case of 10 elements, this, the length of that array will always be 10. We cannot remove an element from an array. We can't add an additional element to an array. It is a fixed length. Um, and, and to be clear, it's not like the engineers at, at Oracle or, or whoever wrote this array code was like, oh, we're gonna be mean and add this restriction. These limitations are due to trade-offs that are made. And so, Something that we, we study in the software engineering class is once we have access to all these different data structures, it's what are the trade-offs? Why do we want to use one instead of another? What are the advantages and disadvantages? And so is, is not being able to change the size of an array a disadvantage? Sure, but arrays have other advantages because of that restriction, okay? And that's something that we're gonna learn a little bit more about throughout this unit and into uh, next semester. So they're, they're good decisions made that result in these, these limitations.
All right, so we've created our new array. So what's the value of all 10 elements? Well, all elements in the array are initialized, initialized to their default values. Um, the same default values that they would be initialized to if they were instance variables. So for integers and doubles, that's zero. For Boolean types, that's false. For all class types, it's null. <clears throat> so this code, the code we started with earlier here, this line here, this code creates an array that contains 10 int elements. Cool. There we go. <clears throat> this method is supposed to create an array of even values. And right now we have an array of 10 elements with all zero. So let's write some code to actually set the value of each element in this array <coughs> to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so on and so forth. So the syntax for that is a, is a little bit different, but um, consistent with, with some other things in Java. So we want to write a little line of code here that sets... Uh, set the value of each element in the array to the first 10 positive even integers. This is a great use for a for loop, right? We don't want to necessarily write 10 lines of code to do this. We'd rather write a for loop. Because, like, what if this array had a million elements? We don't want to have a million lines of code to do this. We definitely want a for loop. Um, in this case, we know that there are 10 elements in the array because we just typed that up here. Um, but you can query the array itself and basically ask the array, hey, how many elements do you have? And we use length for that. So length is used to query the number of elements in the array. And then to actually set the value of the element in the array, we use square brackets again. So square brackets are used to reference a specific element in the array based on its index. And again, indices are zero based. So we want to write a for loop. And so we usually do for int i equals zero. We usually use i, think of like short for index. i is less than, we could say 10 here because we know there are 10 elements, but it is considered better practice to say evens dot length. That's how we get the number of elements in the array referenced by evens. And then we do i plus plus. Please note that length is not a method. It's not length and then parentheses. Um, there are no methods on an array because an array isn't really an object, okay? There's, you can't call any methods on it. Um, so it's just evens.length, almost as if length is a public instance variable, okay? Conceptually, that kind of works. Um, so just keep, keep that in mind. So much like when we have a variable and we... Um, want to say like y equals 5, and that assigns the value 5 to y. We do the same thing with an array element. The syntax is really similar. We use the name of the variable that references the array, evens, and then in square bracket, we put the index. So I can say evens i equals, uh, let's see, we started 0, so we have to do i plus 1 times 2. So this is evaluated to basically saying, hey, here's the assignment operator. Take the value of the thing on the right, when i is 0, that will be 2, and store it in the variable of the thing on the left. Now, this is a little bit more complicated than our traditional like local variable of type int. We're going to store it in the array referenced by evens at the index i, which is 0. Okay? So this is how we set the value of an element in the array. So again, some new syntax. It's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to it. Let's print this array out, system.out.println.
I'm going to run it really quick. I'll get back to the code. When we print, all that's printed is this. And that's the reference to the array. Okay, We've seen that before when we printed um, the value of variables that refer to objects, right? It's just the reference, which is fine, but not necessarily useful. Um, so if we want to actually print all the elements in the array, we have to write the code to explicitly do that. Okay, So this line of code simply prints the reference to the array, not the value of all the elements. But we can do that. We can write another for loop, and we're going to be writing lots of for loops to iterate through an array. We're going to get really good at this. For into i equals zero. i is less than evens dot length. You'll be able to write these for loops in your sleep. And then we can do a system.out.print line for each element. Let's print the index. We'll format it nicely by concatenating a colon and a space. And then we'll concatenate the value of the element at index i. So go ahead, type, compile, and run this, and make sure the output is as we expect. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, up to 20, all the indices from 0 to 9. Perfect. So syntax for setting an element, much like we would do for a regular primitive variable, except we have the little square bracket part. For getting the value of the element, again, much like we would do with a normal variable that that has a primitive value, except we got the square bracket to index into the array. Let's uh, write a new method. Let's do another public static void. And this time, let's create an array of odds. Because what I want to show you next is that there is a second way that we can initialize an array, okay? um, other than uh, writing like our for loop and going element by element we can use something called an array literal. Um, this is also known as, so AKA, this is also known as an initializer list. You'll see that term used in the CS Awesome online text. So an array literal is a pair of curly brackets containing comma separated values. Um, it can be used to initialize the array. It's really convenient. Um, another thing that makes it convenient is the length of the array. The length of the array um, is inferred. We don't have to explicitly state it. It's inferred based on the number of elements in the literal. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that. We still declare the array variable the same way. So we still say integer array odds. So the declaration is the same. We still use the new operator. We still say new. We still say int, except when we don't put a number inside of the square brackets. We don't need to say that there are 10 elements in this array because the compilers can be able to infer that based on how many things we put inside this pair of curly brackets. Here we just list all the values we want. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. Now, if we had like a thousand values, we wouldn't use an array literal. Um, but if we have a small number of values and we know what they are when we write the code, it's just really convenient to do this as opposed to like writing a for loop or something. Um, especially if there's not like a clear pattern to these values. The uh, array literal is, is, is very convenient. Um, and again, we, the word literal is used because we mean literally cr cre create an array with literally these values in it. One, three, five, seven, nine, so on and so forth. Whenever we study a new topic, I always like to uh, make sure that you are um, aware of like the most common pitfalls that we're probably going to run into so that when you see them, um, you're good to go. Um, you're like, oh, I've seen this before. I know how to fix this. Um, so let's, let me show you your first one for that. It is called, 
it's an exception that we will most likely generate several times. It's called the array index out of bounds exception. So you may remember that arrays have a fixed length once initialized, right? We can't add an element to an array. We can't remove an element to an array. The index specified must refer to a valid index. Otherwise, an array index out of bounds exception, really long name, is generated. So let's write some code that intentionally generates this so that you can see what it looks like because you'll notice that it actually create, provides some information that helps us debug our code, um, which is fantastic. So often I see um, students write a for loop like this, for int i equals zero, we're off to a good start. i is less than or equal to odds.length. That's our off by one error. It should be less than odds.length, but we've made a mistake. And then we're trying to print each element so we can see all of, all of them, system.out.println. We're gonna print i. We'll concatenate the colon and the space so it's nicely formatted. And we'll say odd sub i. So that's what our code looks like. So go ahead and type this, compile this, run this, and then look at what the exception tells you. I'm gonna run it as well here. What's really helpful here is not only does it highlight the line of code that generates the exception, down below in this gray bar, it tells us the name of the exception, which is in itself is useful. We know that something's wrong with this index, but it even gives us additional information about when the exception was generated. Index 10 out of bounds for length 10. Um, so this says at some point I had a value of 10, and that's a problem because this the length of the array is only 10. So the greatest index we could have is nine, right? So it really helps us in terms of debugging it and be like, oh yeah, wrote the loop wrong here. Let me fix that. Um, now, if on the other hand, you read this and it say index one out of bounds for length one, your response might be like, wait a minute, this array shouldn't have only one element in it. I must have initialized the array incorrectly. Let me go back and look at where I initialized it. All right. So this message is super useful.